everyone, Mike Stuchiner, Master Herbalist here with Z Natural Foods. And today's frequently asked question video is in regards to the different type of drying processes that our foods go through. Um, I'm going to try and make this as simple as possible because this is a little bit of an involved question and the information can get rather complex. So I'm going to give you some of the more basic information so you understand why we make the choices that we do when we source specific foods from different places and how we come to the decisions we come to. So with that said, there are several reasons why a specific drying process uh, is used on each specific food. Uh, the different drying processes are freeze drying, air drying, low temperature drying, shade drying, and spray drying. You should be aware that all the ones that we decide to utilize, none of them are using any type of chemicals or harsh chemicals of any way, shape, or form. All of these are 100% natural ways of drying these foods. The next thing that needs to be understood is not only is, the, what I should say is, there are many factors that go into why a food is dried the way it is. The perishability of that food, the level of water that is found naturally in that food, and something that we take into very serious account here at Zee Natural Foods is the most traditional way it's been dried since this food was first utilized. Now, of course, as we've, as, as we've grown in technology in this country and in this world, you know, there are better processes that can be used. Like freeze drying is a very modern way of doing things and it's a very safe and effective way to preserve a food for an extensively long period of time. But it should be understood that sometimes the older ways are in fact the better ways of doing things. And it is a very, it is very interesting how some of these old ways are still used. So I'm going to give you some examples. Um, Moringa is a wonderful food that we sell here at Z Natural Foods. And two, while Moringa can grow almost anywhere, two of the most well-known sources are India and uh, South Africa. And in India, where it is most traditionally grown, it is, uh, it is dried through what's called the shade drying process, which basically means it's dried under you know, a covered area, so it's in the shade and it's dried w away from direct sunlight. Now, Moringa is a leaf, so it's smart that you don't necessarily have direct sunlight on it because it can, in fact, affect the end result of what you're looking at when it comes to the nutritional content of it. But this is how they've always dried Moringa in those areas of India where we source our Moringa. Are there other ways of drying Moringa? Sure there are. But what I think you'll find is when you do your research, majority of the places that sell the highest quality Moringa, like Z Natural Foods, all source it from a place where it is in fact shade dried. Okay, so, then you can go into something even more high tech like um, um, freeze drying. Now freeze drying is a very interesting process because that is by far the most expensive one and it is also something interestingly enough that is used on more perishable foods. Um, when, when, when you use a freeze drying process, you generally want to use it on things like berries, strawberries, raspberries, bl blueberries, any type of berries, even uh, um, even things like camu camu or acerola cherry because most often what will happen is is that these foods have a higher water content and because of that higher water content they are much more perishable and that water in that food leaves room for growth of bacteria fungus and other things if it's left out for too long that's why if you leave these berries out for example you'll notice in your home when you have strawberries blueberries they grow mold they grow fungus and they dry up on you very quickly. So the freeze drying process for berries is by far the best way to go. Again, it is a little bit more expensive to do it that way, but you're talking about a greater shelf life, a better product, and you're also talking about a process that locks that nutrition in very, very well. 
the reason often the reason why you don't want to use a freeze drying process let's say on a leaf is because you don't want to use anything too hot or too cold because with a leaf like moringa or even peppermint shade drying or air drying are by far the best ways of doing it leaves not only contain a plethora of different nutrients but one of the uh, group of phytochemicals that are found in, in leaves are uh, volatile oils especially something like peppermint so if you give it something that's way way too hot like boiling water or way way too cold like freezing it you're going to damage the integrity of that food almost every time now it may not necessarily damage all the phytochemistry in that food but i say why take the chance when you're looking at um for example making peppermint tea the reason why making making a cold tea or making a warm infusion is the best way of doing it is because if you do it as a rolling boil tea it's going to destroy all the volatile oils these are very delicate oils and they and they don't respond well to an extreme amount of heat so those are two really good examples of why you want to use one type of drying process over another. Um, I hope that this information has cleared up a lot of confusion that there was in regards to the different types of drying processes. So I'm just going to make a quick review here. When you're deciding on a drying process, you always want to look at the individual food see the water content in that food, the level of water, and how perishable that food is. And oftentimes that is why you will see the company using the specific drying process that they do. Okay guys, um, that's it for today. I'll see you next time. Have a great day.